Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. Hackers love to use C language for hacking. Let's get into it in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So hackers often use the C programming language for several key reasons. So you have low level system access, right? C's low level nature provides several key benefits like direct memory access. C allows direct manipulation of memory addresses and pointers. This enables hackers to create buffer overflow attacks by writing beyond allocated memory. Uh, there's access and modify uh, data in specific memory locations, manipulate system memory directly in ways higher level languages cannot. Uh, you have system level interactions. C provides low level access to uh, system resources and hardware components. So what this essentially does is, is it allows hackers to interact directly with operating system functions and APIs, access and modify system processes and data structures, manipulate hardware components at a fundamental level. Uh, and then when it comes to efficient code execution, C produces small, fast executing binaries. Now the benefits to the hacker uh, is you know it, it in the creation of malware that runs quickly before detection developing exploits that execute rapidly please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you appreciate this content if you're liking it if you're enjoying it please hit that subscribe button and the like button so producing small payloads that are harder for security systems to detect um, now there's fine-grained uh, control C gives programmers precise control over system operations hackers can use this to create custom shell code for exploits develop root root kits um, that hide deeply in systems build specialized hacking tools tailored to specific targets in regards to legacy system exploitation many critical systems and infrastructure are written in C by using C hackers can understand and exploit vulnerabilities in legacy code, reverse engineer existing systems more effectively, gain deeper insights into the inner workings of operating systems and core software, okay? Uh, in regards to performance and efficiency, C is known for its speed and efficiency. Now, this is important for hackers because hacking tools need to execute quickly, right? Whether for password cracking or malware deployment, and again, part of that reason is detection avoiding detection right so c produces small efficient binary files that are harder to detect the speed allows for rapid execution of exploits before security measures can uh, respond now mem memory manipulation c gives programmers fine-grained control over memory management now this is valuable for creating buffer uh, overflow attacks, developing memory-based exploits, manipulating system memory directly in ways higher level languages cannot. And in regards to exploit development, C is extensively used in the security field for writing and developing exploits. Its low level nature makes it ideal for creating shell codes and rootkits, building undetectable malware, developing key loggers and other hacking tools, okay? Now, in regards to legacy system exploitation, many critical systems and infrastructure are written in C. I know, right? That's kind of hard to believe, but that is the case. By mastering C, hackers can understand and exploit those very vulnerabilities in legacy code, reverse engineer existing systems and software, gain insights into the inner workings of operating systems and core software components. So um, there are some real world examples of hacking tools written in C. So C is a popular language for developing hacking tools due to its low level capabilities and efficiency. We just talked about the right, but here are some real world examples of hacking tools written in C. Uh, in regards to network analysis and exploitation, that sphere, you have NMAP, which is a powerful open source network scanner used for network discovery and security auditing. NMAP is written primarily in C and C++ for performance and low level networking access. You have Wireshark, which is a widely used network protocol analyzer that allows users to capture and interactively browse network traffic. While its graphical user interface is written in other languages, its core packet capture and analysis engine is written in C. Uh, now, this is where we get into the fun stuff, right? Password cracking, you have John the Ripper, a free and open source password cracker tool used for auditing and recovery. It supports hundreds of hash and cipher types and is known for its efficiency. Uh, Hashcat, another popular password recovery tool that calls itself the world's fastest password cracker. 
backer. It's written in C for maximum performance, especially when leveraging a uh, GPU acceleration. Uh, you have wireless network hacking, uh, tools like Aircrack NG and an 802.11 WEP and WPA PSK keys cracking program. It's written in C to achieve the necessary speed for capturing and analyzing wireless network packets. You have Bully, which is a WPS, which is Wi-Fi protected setup. Brute Force Attack tool written in C. It offers improved memory and CPU performance compared to similar tools. Uh, packet manipulation, you have HPing3, which is a command line packet crafting and analysis tool written in C. It allows for precise control over packet contents, making it useful for network Work testing and potential exploitation. You have rootkits and malware. While specific examples are not provided, you know, to avoid, you know, we want to avoid promoting malicious activities, right? C is often used to create rootkits and low-level malware due to its ability to interact directly with system resources and hardware. Now, in regards to exploitation frameworks, you have Metasploit. Uh, while the framework itself is primarily written in Ruby, many of its exploits and payloads are written in C for performance and low-level uh, system interaction. Now, uh, we have a malware that was written in C, right, which is a Stuxnet. And, and that was reportedly developed as a joint effort by the United States and Israel through, you know, neither, you know, even though neither country has officially claimed responsibility, it's, you know, the primary target was Iran's nuclear program, specifically the uranium enrichment facility in uh, Natanz. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So the technical characteristics was uh, Stuxnet uh, exploited four zero day vulnerabilities in Windows systems, which is an unusually high number for a single piece of malware. It specifically targeted uh, Simon Step 7 software used to program programmable logic controllers, also known as PLCs, that automate industrial processes, right? The worm uh, was designed to spread via USB drives, allowing it to infect air gap systems not connected to the internet. Now, the mode of operation, the infection. Stuxnet would infect Windows computers through USB drives or network shares. Propagation, it would then search for Simon's Step 7 software. You have the PLC manipulation. Upon finding the target software, Stuxnet would modify PLC code to sabotage centrifuge uh, operations. Now, the stealth, um, you know, this is the quickly, the quickly thing, right? The worm sent false feedback to monitoring system hiding its activities. The impact and significance Stuxnet reportedly destroyed about one fifth of Iran's nuclear centrifuges. It is considered the world's first digital weapon capable of causing physical damage through cyber attacks. The worm set a precedent for state sponsored cyber attacks on critical infrastructures. The next uh, malware we had that was, you know, written in C was uh, Conficker. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a notorious computer worm that first emerged in November 2008, uh, targeting Microsoft Windows operating systems. Now, the key details of this of this malware was, um, you know, the variants, right? Conficker, also known as Down Up. Uh, Donna up and kiddo spread rapidly through various methods exploiting a vulnerability in Windows uh, server service that's the MS08067 propagating through network shares with weak passwords using the USB device auto run feature okay that was the big one uh, there was several uh, variants that emerged over time you have the configure a November 2008, Configure B, December 2008, Configure C, February 2009, Configure D, March 2009, Configure E, April 2009. So that was really getting busy, right? Later variants added features like peer-to-peer -peer communication and the ability to download additional uh, malware. So this, the impact and speed was at, at its peak in January 2009. Configure infected an estimated 9 to 15 million machines worldwide. It affected systems in over 190 countries, making it one of the largest known computer worm infections since the 2003 SQL Slammer worm. Okay, so that is what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Again, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you like this content, if you appreciate this content, if you learned a lot from this content. Also, hit that notification bell so you know when I am releasing new videos. Also, let me know your comments in the comment section below and I'll, uh, you know, respond to you. So uh, stay safe. I appreciate your viewership. See you in the next video.